Hello and welcome to No Rest from the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio today, he is an accomplished director and director of photography, Mr. Dave Prokopek. Welcome, Dave. Hey, I'm very, very happy to be here. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. Um, now, you're a, a Brooklyn guy, right? So, pretty local? Yeah, well, I'm originally from Pittsburgh. I moved to, uh, to Brooklyn about uh, three or four years ago, and... I love it. So you've been in the industry for a little bit now, and I wanted I want to start out. I want to talk to you about uh, the I want the function of a DP and kind of you know you pulling double duty and relationship with the director and all that kind of stuff because I've really been wanting to get a director of photography on the show to talk about that. Uh, but I want to start talking a bit about you first. So how did you how did you get to filmmaking, and, and what is your origin story, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm originally from uh, from Pittsburgh. Uh, always been involved with the arts. I went to a creative and performing arts high school, um, where I had a, a major where you concentrated in um, visual arts or acting or whatever it was. So just always surrounded by just talent. Um, so I did drawing, painting, photography, ceramics, sculpture, glass blowing, architecture, like all this stuff. And all throughout high school, I knew that I was going to be an architect. The whole way, the whole way through. Um, I, I always had, I always you had. You knew you were going to be. An I architect. knew it. I knew it. I took so many math classes. It took so much prep. Um, See, we're we're not all like uh, you know we're not just weird creative people. We also have like we, some of us actually plan to do real jobs. Oh, I was weird industry. and creative. That's that's why I'm here. Uh, so, <laughs> so you so how did you get from you know I want to be an architect to you know I want to start being a filmmaker? Yeah. So I um, I always uh, had a camera in my hands. I always had a, a whether it was taking stills or uh, or video, and uh, I just really enjoyed. Uh, in high school, kind of going into the, the dark room, uh, doing photography, uh, black and white photography, and just kind of going out, shooting something, not knowing whether you're going to, you know, get something that's that works. Um, but whenever you go in and you, you know, you pour all the chemicals and you rock the trays, you stay there for hours and hours and hours in the dark room. And then you, you finally make your, um, your exposure and your, your print, and you come out and you look at it. Uh, and that was, that was so gratifying. And... And, and I love that. Um, and with architecture, you know, I just love the idea of creating spaces and just how, you know, the, the, the light would kind of interact with this whole thing. So uh, at the end, uh, I, you know, was going to go to one of the bigger universities for, for architecture. And uh, at the end of senior year in high school, you had to create a, uh, a you know, a graduation project. So I figured, all right, I'm never going to make a movie ever again. I'm going to make a feature. So I made this this B uh, kind of horror movie uh, feature with all my friends. There were you know because it was a poor arts high school, so I had access to actors and musicians and and all these people, and everyone supported it. They they thought it was great. I mean, everyone wanted to be a part of the film. And uh, at the end of the the whole thing, there was a screening, and everyone at the entire high school they got to come to the screening, and there was a a Q and A session afterwards. And I was standing up on stage after the whole thing. Um, and it was a horror movie, so they, like, the theater department, they even put on like a, a version of Thriller and like all this other kind of stuff. It was fog everywhere. It was, it was the best thing. And uh, standing up on stage and then answering those questions, I thought, crap, I'm really going to go to college and be an architect. And then I, I told my parents, I said, hey, I, I think I want to be a filmmaker. And they go, we know. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. So that was that was that. So that was in high school. That was in so high school. So you found out really early. Now, today you work as a DP. You market yourself as a DP, but you also direct, and sometimes you do double duty. You're sort of a, a Steven Soderbergh type. Um, talk to me about uh, kind of projects. Like, what sort of projects do you direct for the most part? And do you all do you always DP when you direct? So um, whenever I like to direct in DP, it's usually for something that's a little more um, contained. And whenever I say that, it's kind of like a music video where you're working with like one artist or whatever it is, because you there's always nuances with the, the performance. So if it's a certain type of song, the way that you, you hold the camera, the way you move, because you know, if you know the artist, you know that 
how there's a certain part of the song and there's an emotion you just you lean in a certain way or you hold your breath and you you kind of whatever it is you you know and to to kind of communicate that to um a cinematographer on set um you can obviously but sometimes you just you know because i know what i want i i can just do it you kind of eliminate the middleman in that regard because you can shoot i've done that myself and it, it can be beneficial i mean on bigger things i'd rather not be my own dp uh, just because there's way too much to think about often. Um, and then for the other gigs, when you're not doing that, like when you are a director of photography, first of all, um, for somebody who doesn't know, uh, and probably most of the people listening to the show do, but how, what is your definition of a director of photography? How, how do you define that? So the director of photography is the magician on set. We, we figure out how to take the... The impossible vision of the director, the who who has this uh, beautiful grand picture of whatever story or whatever vision it is that they have, and nobody knows what is in you know going on in 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 there. And the cinematographer or director of photography's job is to translate that and to create something that's beautiful, that works for the piece. Because you can shoot anything that's beautiful. But if it doesn't work towards the actual film and the context of it, um, then you're just creating beautiful stuff for the sake of it. So you have to understand the material and the vision of the director to be able to really just create this magic. You know, it's funny because I've seen a lot of great DPs interviewed, uh, people like Vilmo Zygmunt or, you know, uh, Roger Deakins or somebody like that. And they're all very concerned with story, you know, and telling, like, how do we use a camera to tell a story rather than, you know, how do we make pretty pictures kind of thing. And the, the, the funny thing is, it's like director of photography is the only real guy on the set who has director uh, in part of the title. Uh, besides the director of the film, and but like, there's different power dynamics, right, between uh, the director and the, and the DP. So like for you, I don't know how you work, but you know some directors, you know like if you're, if you're Stanley Kubrick, for instance, Stanley Kubrick, if you had you and, and you were the DP, he'd say, um, okay, we're going to shoot this, uh, bring the 35, keep the the 50 in your pocket, and you know maybe bring a wide for something else. Like he's literally telling you what lenses to shoot on. And there's some other guys who, uh, you know, like Woody Allen or something, w when he worked with Gordon Willis, he would just let Gordon shoot. You know, he was, you know, he would take care of the director of the acting, but, you know, Gordon would come up with these impossible weird shots, and he'd be like, okay, great, let's do it. Um, what, is, what is your dynamic, do you find, most often? Do you wind up giving a lot of visual input, and, uh, or... Uh, do you, and, and is it different for different people? Are you always kind of like a different DP for different directors? I guess would be the question. You know, it's it's always different when it comes to uh, how um, how much input and how hands on the the director will kind of uh, trust you. That's really what it is. If if, if the director trusts you, and uh, usually whenever I work with a, a director, uh, you know, once or twice, uh, usually on the the second or third time or whatever it is. They usually just say, "All right, Dave, just go. You got this. Just, just go." That's kind of why they're bringing me on. So the frame and show it to me, kind of thing. Right, and they yeah. just want to kind of sit there and you know just give a, an idea of what they're looking for. I'll look at the be, monitor and be surprised yeah. once it's all right, all set. But then on on the other side of it, uh, sometimes I'll have a director who's very, very specific. So they'll want uh, me to walk backwards up a pair of stairs while rack focusing a 50 millimeter lens and that's you know that's fine like you know someone could say oh just make it look nice to very specific things. right and i find it's uh it's you get different results with different people and for me like personally it's like when i'm working with a dp that i trust and i don't trust a lot of people like i got a small group of people that i work with but uh there's there's a guy that i work with regularly and he usually knows what i want you know like, and he's able to and I'll say, hey, frame this shut up. I need, I need a two here or I need a single. And he knows what to do. Like I don't, most of the time, uh, and, some, and then he'll bring his ideas to it as well of like, okay, you know, if we do this in a one or we can get two setups for one or we can do, uh, you know, we can combine things. It'll save time and it looks really nice, whatever it is. And I, I feel like if you're a good director, you welcome that from the DP, um, especially if they know what they're doing and they're good. Like, And there's, 
I imagine like if you're a novice director and you're working with a super experienced DP, it can probably be a little bit intimidating, you know. But uh, then I guess it's the DP job, the DP's job to make the director feel comfortable with him and say, you know, don't worry, I got you. We're, like we're we're in this together, kind of thing, because it is a team. You know, the achieving the look of a fi film is, and then the other thing that I think a lot gets a lot of sort of emphasis and weight gets placed on director of photography or the cinematographer. But, you know, how much are you working with the art director or the set designer or, you know, uh, the costume designer and all those people? Do you get to work with teams like that often? And, and what's the relationship between you and, and the art director mm -hmm. and you and, and the, those other design uh, jobs that are on the set? Right, yeah, so um, depending on the, the budget of the, the production, because it, I uh, shoot um, commercials, music videos, um, documentaries, whatever it is, um, there might be a larger crew and whenever typically you have a larger crew like that and there is an art department and, and, and those types of things and a you know and a props person and you know, if you're lucky enough to have if you're, an art if you're lucky enough yeah. if you're lucky enough to, to be it's on one thing of those that things we things don't get a lot of unfortunately but I, I would I would love to have that most of yeah because they do a lot for the look of the film yeah um, I'm I, sorry it's continu continue I don't know I had a um, it was a week-long shoot we went to uh, we went to Florida for a week um, and it was for one of the a large, large brand, and um, and I had full you know access to you know it was full collaboration with the the art department to kind of set up and, and uh, dress everything because uh, a lot of things were everything that we were shooting on this you know particular shoot was outdoors, and because of time and kind of matching things, um, there was a lot of day for night, night for day. There was a lot of doing that and a lot of, you know, kind of cheating things. So whenever you, uh, we had a, a lot of um, greenery and plants kind of in the background for the shot and had to be brought daylight, but we're shooting it in the middle of the night and we need it to rain. So we're doing a lot of things, you know, and, and so kind of like working with the art department to say, all right, let's go ahead and uh, bring me over that flower basket thing we had in that shot and just you know like whatever it is it, it, it's very it can be very specific and mm -hmm. whenever you have all these people who are on their you know their a game and who want to be there and who really they they look at the image and they understand all right this is you know we're all part of this and we're making something that's really really good there's a whole host of questions about like how do you work with a gaffer or how do you work with a colorist um i think the unfortunate thing is like um i don't like on most shoots, because you know a lot of us are working in low budget land, do you get to work with a gaffer, or do you wind up being your own gaffer for the most part? Um, it depends what it is. Like so, for uh, some of the larger music videos, I'll get a gaffer. Um, even like the, the lower ones, I'll you know sometimes bring I'll bring somebody on just to you know even though um, yeah I mean I, I usually light stuff myself when it's smaller um, because I've you know I have gaffed you know quite a bit um, but I, I do enjoy having uh, you know somebody there whenever you're on uh, like a like a bigger shoot so if you're on a commercial shoot and you have a, a you know a lot of clients because you that's one thing you have to um, you know balance clients and expectations and all these things so if you're on set and um, you have to kind of you know not convinced, but like talk to a client and just say, hey, you know, the reason why we're kind of doing this and this is to, you know, do this. And if I'm, you know, putting a lot of my time into kind of smoothing things over or whatever it is, you know, I could have been, you know, giving my instruction to somebody else. So it's, you know, it, it, sometimes it's really difficult to be on um, these smaller sets and not have that. But in the same, you know, in the same scope of things, it's kind of depends what it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, the last commercial shoot I worked on with uh, Blake Farber, we had uh, a gaffer who was like Yoda. He was amazing. Uh, and I just thought, like, what an asset this guy is to a uh, set. Now, for those of you who know, the, the guy, for, for novices out there may not know these things, but, like, a gaffer is basically the head of the, the lighting and electrical department. And he really works with the DP to, to help determine the, the look and the light of the film and how they're going to achieve certain effects and so forth. So it's very important, you know, like you can do a lot with a good gaffer at your side who's, you know, while you're talking to the director, you can kind of whisper in his ear and say, hey, you know, uh, put a key light over here and put the fill over here. And, you know, um, and they and if they know their stuff, they can really help you out. 
uh, and and make things go a lot faster on the set too. If, Absolutely. Because otherwise, you know, if you're if you're lighting your own stuff, which unfortunately a lot of us had to do, you got to run back and forth between like setting the light, looking through the lens, mm. setting, and it's great to have somebody there who can help you mm. do that. Oh. But in the same sense, uh, whenever you do have a, a, a gaffer who, who might not be as familiar with your work or your style, your lighting or the technique, um, it could really uh, haunt you sometimes. Because if, if they don't really get it, if they don't get the vision, if they've kind of have shot something like this before, they might try to light it like something else. And whenever you're a gaffer, you really have to trust your DP. You, you really do because... Um, it just there there's some type of vision or some type of reasoning behind whatever it is i mean it's okay to ask questions obviously sure um but really just to you know to make sure that that those two people that your your gaffer and your your dp are just you know they're connected i think what a lot of people don't realize too is like a lot of people are concerned about like what camera you're shooting on and and all that but it's really um you know this team of people that make a look of a film Especially working on a feature. I mean, think about how many people are on a feature set. Every one of those people is, is there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, people try to do it with, like, five people. Yeah, you can do it, but it's, it's, it's a lot easier if you have a good team behind you. Moving on, so in terms of, you know, we're, I think we're giving a lot of advice here, but I would say when you started out, obviously you were, you know, a kid when you started out. But then when you started working professionally, uh, you've been working professionally now for a number of years, but if you could go back in time and, like, if Dave now could give young Dave advice, what would you say to yourself? Oh, that's that's such a good question. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I would say to um, just don't let people take advantage of you. Stick up for yourself because uh, in the industry there's there's kind of like this – um, Talk to these guys right here. Yeah. So in, in the industry, there's kind of this uh, notion where, you know, you have to you have to work for free. You have to earn your way to work for free. And, you know, that's that's fine. You know, it's great for the, the experience because uh, at the end of the day, if you're working on set for, for a big client and you screw something up, that that just doesn't mess up that, uh, you know, contact. I mean, that that is a chain reaction for everything. Um so that's really important, but uh, just lost in me. terms of sticking up for yourself. Oh right. So um, let's just say when if you're you know you're starting off as a young filmmaker, and you know you might have a client that says, "All right, hey, come in today. We're gonna have you shoot um, three interviews." You know, seems pretty straightforward. You get there, and then they say, "Oh yeah, Susan from so and so, she's here today." You know, it's okay to throw her, and then then you have a fourth interview. And then, um, you know, things start snowballing because now you had three videos, now you have a fourth video, and now you're dealing with stuff that's, you know, that's not part of the budget anymore. And, you know, on set, you know, sometimes, you know, you just can't avoid certain things happening like that. And the conversation has to be, you know, talked about, um, you know, for compensation for the post side of things. So that's really what, you know, what happens there. It's a good point to make because even when, even when you're learning, it's like you, say you're starting out, and I've had people uh, work for me who are just starting out, and there's some people, you know, they'll come on as like an intern, or they'll, you know, they'll just be an extra pair of hands on the set. Mm -hmm. But you know, for me personally, I want to make sure that who, who's ever there, whatever they're there for, I want to make sure that they're getting something out of it if they're mm -hmm. not being compensated, even if they are. I mean, I hope that they're learning something. Right. Uh, and, you know, you make sure that you feed everybody and all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of times when I think people do, even if you're, you know, say you, so like say you, you want to be a DP, you're going to start hopefully somewhere in the camera department. Maybe you'll be like a second AC. Maybe you'll be cleaning slates and, and clapping boards all day long. That's fine. Um, it's a good thing to know how to do, and it really does inform the picture and make things go smoother if you have a good second AC, mm -hmm. uh, an assistant camera person. But then, you know, it's like make sure that if you are working for free, you get that credit, and you can put that on your resume so that you can work up to being in a bigger, better camera department so that you can, 
get paid that next time and, and get maybe a first AC role eventually and then maybe a camera operator role and then maybe, you know, eventually move up to DP. I think for, for DPs as well, like particularly in that role in terms of standing up for yourself, it's a continuation, right? So it, it's like a, a compromise of, okay, so you want to stick up for your ideas because you're obviously you're the guy behind the camera. Your ideas have merit. But it's also the director's film. So, you know, so you ha your ideas have to coincide with his ideas, and if they don't, you have to know when to throw them away. Right, so the, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because, um, so whenever you're on set uh, with a director, and sometimes things, you know, go completely 100% smooth, and then you end up with a, a boring movie. And then, whenever you are on set, and there's kind of this, this tension between, you know, the, the director, they might really want this specific shot. And you might not like the shot or think it works or you think you might need it. But at the end of the day, the, they're the director. Like, you, you have to give them, the, you know, the shot they want. But what I usually do in that circumstance is uh, I'll just say, hey, so, you know, the, this shot, it, it doesn't particularly work for whatever the reason it is. Um, let's go ahead and, and do a backup. You know, make sure we have a backup take of this because... I don't think this and this and this will cut together. And as long as, because nine times out of ten, that's gonna that's gonna do it. And you really need to be able to save, you know, not save, but like you need to be able to make sure that everything cuts together. Because if you have ten shots that all look great, and nothing cuts together, then you're, you know. And directors and, and editors around the world are singing hallelujah <laughs> because, you know, I'm an editor and I've seen that happen where it's like, and I've also been the DP on set where you're like, no, get that. Get that insert right there because you're going to need a cut point. And the director said, "Oh, thank you. I didn't think about that." Uh, there's so many little things like that that if you, or you know, stupid little things like getting B-roll. You know, like I, my one of my first movies, I was very uh, green, and I was lucky to have a DP who was more experienced. And you know, in, we're in between shots, and I see him going off shoot something. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm getting some B-roll for you. And I was like, well, what's that for? And, you know, it turns out, like, I ended up using every scrap of hero. it. And <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, and the, yeah. the film would not have cut together without those little inserts or cutaways or whatever. So, it, and, if, and if they're not on the shot list, it's great that you know what those things should be mm -hmm. and, and that you can get them. Uh, we're going to move on, but first, before we, before we get you out of here, uh, what Tell us about some upcoming projects or what people should be looking out for you and, and, and what you got on the on the uh, front burner right now. Yeah, so um, so recently I've been uh, directing and shooting a lot of uh, fashion stuff, and it, it's kind of really picked up, and there's a lot of momentum going with that, and I really enjoy uh, shooting that. So it turns out that I'm going to be uh, traveling a, a bit around the, the world uh, to London and uh, to Cuba and a couple other places, um, and I'll be starting my travel blog. Uh, that, that kind of follows the you know the behind the scenes of a, a filmmaker who is really run and gun grill style on the, the go. Uh, that kind of just just shows you how to how to pack, you know, how to just you know just shoot, survive, and and just keep moving. You're gonna be a one man band for the one most part. One man band shooting with a red. And, and okay. I, wow. You know, so that's, that's a lot of camera to be hauling by yourself. It is, but I, I backpack with it all the time. Very cool. So. Um, Look out for that. Is, do you have a URL for that yet, or that will just be on your website? Yeah, so that'll be on my website. That's at uh, lightraiderpictures.com, and then you can follow me on Instagram, and that's at Dave Prokopek. I know it's... Spell yeah. your last name so yeah. people get it. So it's P-R-O-K-O-P-E-C. Well, Dave, thanks so much for coming down, man. I think there's a lightning talk, and, and uh, you know, when you, when you come back from your travels, hit us up. And, we, you know, we can talk about uh, the different videos that oh, you get. Oh, yeah, so I'd, I'd love to. I think it's going to be some exciting stuff. That sounds like fun. I've always wanted to go to Cuba. Yeah, same. It just it looks like a film set in existence. Oh, I know. It's, it's so uh, perfect. But uh, thanks so, so much for coming. And uh, thank you all for uh, taking this trip down the rabbit hole. For more episodes of No Rest of the Weekend, uh, you can always find them on our website, btrp.nyc slash podcast. You can also catch us on all the major podcast uh, channels, including Anchor, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, once again, just want to thank my guest, Dave Prokopek. Did I say it right? Prokopek, yes. Prokopek, yes. Uh, thank you, Dave, for coming. And uh, thank you uh, for Behind the Rabbit Productions. I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>